So now, now let's have a look into the weighted moving average. So here, what we're doing is we have the same principle as the as the moving average as we have seen in the previous video, but here we have a new term, which is the weight. So for every previous data points that we will take the average of, we use a weight, okay? So for instance, if I use moving average period of two, okay, so we have y t minus i and w t minus i. So if I try to break it down, the equation, so what actually it means is that we will take the summation, so we have y t minus one and then w t minus one plus we have y t minus two and w t minus two. So if I break when we have a m, when our m equals to two, then if we break down the equation, that's how it looks like. So now we are simply saying that we will multiply the previous data point with some weight and the one before that also with some weight. And if we had three moving average period, we will just add y t minus three multiplied with w t minus three. Okay, so we can have as many moving average periods as we want. Here, the process becomes a bit simple. If we say the total weight given to all these previous values should be one. If we put this constraint here, then the calculation becomes a bit easier. So let's say we put 0 0.8 weight to the first previous data point, then meet this constraint, our second weight will be 0 0.2, okay? It simply means that we will have higher weight to the latest information available, or lower weight to a bit older information that becomes available. Or if we had, if we had like, let's say if we had three, y t minus three, and then w t minus three, then it would be a good idea to have a weight of 0 0.7 here, then we put a weight of 0 0.2 here, and then for, for this w here, we put a weight of 0 0.1. So all of them adds up to one, okay, to meet our constraint as we mentioned here. So now let's have a look how it works in cell. So now let's say we create another cell here, we are now doing weighted moving average. So I will call it weighted WMAVG. And for this error, I will call it error WMAVG. So let's say we do it considering moving average period of two, just to make our life a bit simpler, but you can try three, four, five, six, whatever you want. So now, when we do this moving average, it is a good idea to actually create a cell on the top. So we will need two parameters, right? For if we go for two periods, we will need two parameters, the weight for the recent one and the weight for the older one. Okay, so let's say we say, we just to start off, we say that we will use one parameter of 0 0.8 and another parameter of 0 0.2. I mean, weight, not parameter, okay? So that, let's say we, that's how we uh, refer to them. Let's put some colors here so that we can see them. So now if I'm doing my forecast here in this period in time, so I will go here. So let's say for my recent value, recent previous value is this one. I'm in March. I have the data up to February. I'm trying to forecast the March period. And I want to put higher weights to the recent one. So this one the latest one that I have in February, and I'm going to fix it using a four. And then I'm going to put a plus, and then the a bit older data point that I have, and then multiply with a bit smaller weight here. And both, all, all, the adds, all the weights should add up to one, as we mentioned earlier. And then I'm going to press a four to fix it as well. So this will be my forecasted value, okay? And if I just double click, we will have all the values up to the end. I'm going to use up to three decimal, okay? So we'll have all the values and it will change a little bit when we are here. So here up to this point, it is still fine. We have the two data points, right? But what happens after that? So what happens when we are here? In theory, we do not have this data panel, although we have it here so that we can compare which model works best in the out sample, but in theory, we don't really have the data points for the out sample periods, right? 
So in that case, what we will do is I will simply replace this data point here, the D46, with this forecasted value of the previous period. Okay. And then this becomes my forecast value. And then here, when I'm here, what I will do, in theory, I don't have any of these previous available, so I will just change to this previous value and also to this previous value. So both of them are forecasted values, okay? So we are using the forecasted values to forecast the future values, as we discussed in the dynamic forecasting approach video, okay? And then I will just drag it down, and then the equation should be in place. Yeah, it works fine. And you see, at some point, it becomes more or less the same. Because when we have the same values, and then we are actually putting the same weighting strategy, then it makes the values kind of stable. Okay, but anyway, and we can quickly see, actually, if I change here a little bit, what happens? If I make it 0 0.7, and this one should be then 0 0.3, then what happens? So we can kind of see these things, okay? And we can also actually optimize uh, these parameters to see the best result and to do that first we actually have to calculate the MAPE and we can optimize for the lowest MAPE so again for forecast error calculation to, cal to calculate the MAPE we will go here and we will go with absolute value okay and then we take the difference from the real one and the forecasted value and we divide it by original value. That's what we get in our error calculation, absolute error calculation, only this part of the equation, AT minus YT absolute divided by AT. So we will just drag it down. If I double click, I get all the values there. So I'll take up to three decimal points again. Okay. Yeah, actually I have four, so I can make it three. And then for the MAP calculations, if I just move it, I will have all the equations in place. Yes, this is the taking the average of all of it. This is taking average of only the training sample period and this is taking the average of the test sample period. So here we see actually this forecast is quite good. It is quite close to the naive one, okay? And also for the training sample, it's pretty good. But for the test sample, yeah, actually it's still better than the naive one. But here we see that this, this one works pretty good. But anyway, so we were saying about optimizing this. To do that, we will have to go to data and we have to go to solver. If you do not have solver, please add it on. I'll make another video on how to add solver. But anyway, so I'm going to solver. What is it that I'm trying to minimize? So I will say that I will minimize. So my objective is to minimize overall MAP. I'm not going for training or test. We can actually do it like that. But for now, I'm just demonstrating and I'm going for the overall MAP. And then I say minimize it by changing values, which values they can change when minimizing this. They can change only these two values. So to add a constraint, the constraint that I will be adding here is that these two values, the sum of these two should be always one. Actually to do that, I should add them. I should actually add them somewhere so that I can use it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this constraint here that this plus this. Okay, and I will put a color here so that this is not uh, not not much visible to us. Uh, I will remove this one. I will put let's a very light color so it's not visible. Okay, so now what I will do? I will go to data again and then solver. We are minimizing these by changing these two values, and we add a constraint that is this value should be equal to one all the time. Okay, so this cell L1 should be always one. So that means the sum of the weights should be one. Add, okay, yeah, okay or cancel, whatever. And then if we solve it again, yeah. the linearity conditions required by the solver are not satisfied. But in that case, we can actually try to go for non-linear and see if that works. And it found a solution. And it says that, okay, we should put one to our recent one. Okay, in that case, actually, it will be same as our naive forecast. It is always kind of put in the same value. If we do it like this, it's it's you see the results are more or less same as the naive forecast. 
So that's the best it says that we can get from this method. Okay, so I'm not very happy about this solution. So we'll keep moving to some other methods. So the next one we'll try is exponential smoothing. Thank you.